Hello everyone, I'm Peter Lodico. I'm the Township Clerk Business Administrator for the Township of Saddlebrook. Many of you have seen me at the Council meetings, probably recording the votes of the Council. One of the duties of the Township Clerk is Secretary to the Governing Body. Another uh, state uh, mandate for clerks is also Chief Administrative Officer of Elections. And we're here today to talk about the elections in November. As many of you know, it's an all-male uh, ballot and I'm privileged to have uh, Bergen County Clerk John Hogan with us today, as well as Superintendent of Elections Patricia DiCostanzo, and Deputy Superintendent of Elections Teresa Mullins O'Connor. On a side note, I just would like to mention Terry's husband, Jerry O'Connor, is a former Saddlebrook resident. The council at a meeting a few months ago recognized him. Uh, he passed away recently. We extend our sympathies. But Jerry was also a mayor of Saddlebrook, a former freeholder, freeholder chairman, and also a state senator. And we extend our condolences. Thank you so much, Peter. Okay. Uh, I think we'll start today with the superintendent of elections. Okay. Uh, maybe we talk about uh, registration because that's coming up. Sure, sure. Voters. Well, first of all, thank you for having us. Thank you. And the more we can get the word out, the better it is for the, uh, the voters of Bergen County. Um, we are. Our office, Teresa and myself, are in charge of the voter registrations, the voting machines, and um, any type of uh, investigations that go on uh, with the possibility of fraud. So obviously, right now, we're very busy. And um, I can tell you, we are at 658,000 registered uh, voters in Bergen. That's up today. Um, we have three ways to uh, register now. We have online registration that you can go on a computer and register online. Uh, you can also go to your borough hall. Uh, we also have a um, motor vehicle. If you go to change your license or um, your registration, you can register there. And I must admit the numbers are coming in high as could be. Today we got 1,600 online registration. We had 542 motor vehicles. And of course we have the old fashioned way on the paper that gets mailed in and they're not as high. They're in the two, three hundreds, but we are working seven days a week. Um, seven in the morning to nine at night to make sure that we get everybody in uh, an opportunity to vote in this election could it because it is a very important election. Um, Teresa, you want to add anything to well, that? The, the deadline is October 13th, so uh, you have until October 13th if you have not registered. Uh, you can also go online and see if you are registered. If you go to NewJerseyElections.org, you can go onto their website and confirm your resident your, that you are registered, which we would encourage you to do because what a lot of people are doing is re-registering online through the Secretary of State and we're getting a lot of duplicates. So be helpful to check your registration or call our office and we'll confirm your registration for you. Also uh, online now they put on uh, you can track your ballot. That's another thing you can do. Uh, you go on the, the uh, Division of Elections website you'll see track your ballot. We advise you to call us first to get your uh, voter ID number because that's needed and then you can see when your ballot was mailed, when it was returned and when it was uh, you know accepted so there's a lot of things out there for the public that the legislature has done this year uh, for this presidential election and needless to say we are very busy <laughs> needless to say yes it goes without saying but i want to thank you guys because you're great partners with the municipalities and uh, we yeah. work together as a team and I, I said this at the last public meeting uh the integrity of the ballot and the election is paramount with Bergen county Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, I think it's important also to note that the public may not know that, that in both the Superintendent of Elections Office and the Board of Elections Office, there's bipartisan representation. So a lot of people are concerned, and there's a lot of misinformation out there, but everything that Patty and I do in our office and the Board of Elections, there's six commissioners, three Democrats, and three Republicans, and Patty and I are of opposite parties. So we've been together 26 years. So as Peter said, we were, every, every election official makes sure that everything is fair and above board. And understand, we know how we got there, but our, the only thing we care about is people registering to vote, and that is the greatest gift we have in this country, and that's what we're concerned with, that everybody has that opportunity. Thank you. John, maybe we could talk about the actual ballot. Believe it or not, all these years, I've never voted by absentee or, or by mail. So. I, I just want to say one other thing. I, I forgot, Peter. 
uh, about uh, voting the ballot because uh, Jamie Sheen, the chairwoman of the Board of Elections, isn't here. But there's three uh, ways you can vote your ballot this year, and you can. Uh, there's drop boxes all over uh, 18 towns in Bergen County. She tried to set it up that it was only like two towns away, so you could didn't have to travel far. Next year, the law that was passed in February, every town, 70 towns will have a drop box in it for next year's election for the governor. You can also go to the polling place and bring your mail-in ballot, but you will be required to sign a book and then drop your ballot in the, another lock box there. Uh, I just want to uh, remind all the people, people are calling us and telling us, well, I'm, I want to vote on the machine, I want to vote on the machine. You cannot vote on the machine unless you're a handicapped. And there's a form that you have to sign, and that is for people who are sight impaired and are literate. So what they're going to do is they're going to give you another paper ballot, the provisional ballot. And you're going to stand online and fill that out, and the poll worker is going to take it from you, and that will be brought back to our office that night for fact-finding. But, you know, it's kind of silly because you can't vote on the machines. And we're trying to keep this election as calm as possible because we understand people want to go to the polls and you know we feel that would have been good too, but it didn't happen. So let's follow the rules, let's do the right thing and make our election a calm, smooth election. Great. Thank you. Thank you. It comes, the thoughts come after. <laughs> Anytime you jump in. No format here. John, on the uh, mail-in ballot. Now, I know it's new, they're calling it a new term, but we've had absentee ballots before in mail -in ballots. So for us, it's not a, a new term, it's just more extensive use. Yeah, but we'll vote by mail a number of years ago. That term replaced um, absentee ballots. In the old days, absentee ballots, you had to know that you were going to be sick on election day. You had to know that you were going to be out of town. And it got a little ridiculous. So now you have the opportunity to vote in a regular election in the machines or, or voting by mail. In this election, the governor through executive order 177 had determined that this is, as Patty and, and Terry had said, a total vote by mail election. The only people who will be voting in the open polling places will be those who, who are disabled, who don't have the ability to fill out a paper ballot. Those are the only ones that will be permitted. If someone shows up that day, for some reason, they lost their vote by mail ballot. They hadn't sent it in. They'll be able to vote by provisional ballot. The good news is that all the ballots are out. As of yesterday, all the ballots are in the mail, just shy of 600,000 ballots that had to be sent out to every active registered voter in Bergen County. As you heard from the superintendent of elections, that um, people are still getting registered to vote up to October 13th. Because of that, that creates a manual process for my office in which, in which we have to actually manually put together the packets and send those out. I think there's about 20,000, uh, the numbers keep changing every day, but I think the cumulative total is another 20,000 ballots that are being mailed out manually through our office. We have a commitment from the post office that those ballots will be uh, delivered immediately as first class mail. I know that my own came out two days after they went to the post office. I've heard it throughout the county that delivery has been really good. My main concern is, I watched a presidential debate the other night, and the leader of Free World said some things that are absolutely not true about how elections are handled in Bergen County. We work real hard. This is the team that delivered elections during Hurricane Sandy. We delivered an election when the sheriff had resigned five weeks before the election. We still successfully delivered that election. We delivered a vote by mail primary election, no voter fraud in the primary election. So this is a competent team. The same people are in place. We're Democrats, we're Republicans. Our goal is just to, de is just to deliver a, a, an election. Now voting by mail, as I said a number of times, it's convenient, it's easy, it's secure, and we encourage everyone, as soon as you get the ballots, this is not the monthly bills, Peter. This is about it's so that yeah. not to do like what I do with the monthly bills and put it on the shelf and pay them the last minute. Fill out the ballot, open it up, make an informed decision, block out all the noise. There's no aliens coming to vote, people are not voting five times. Block out all the noise, fill out the ballot. Remember that the ballot is a two page ballot and there's voting on the opposite side that includes three state questions. 
that's very important that people vote the whole ballot. Take your time in doing it. There's an inner envelope in which you place the ballot. You can peel and seal that envelope. You have to fill out the certification. That's how the Superintendent of Elections Office verifies through signature that, you're, that there's no fraud um, or, or any question as, as to your vote. Make sure you sign it. The governor has done something in the state this year that allows you to cure that signature. Sometimes people in their haste, they want to vote for president, they're a new voter, and they never sign it, or they put a line through it, the signature section. The Board of Elections is going to be able, be able to open ballots 10, 10 days, days before. before the election and days. start going through those to make sure that everyone signed the certifications. If they haven't, those cert, they, there'll be a cure letter that will be sent out to that voter so that they can get their ballot in before the deadline of election day. Also, if your ballot is postmarked on election day, it'll still be counted as long as it's received up to November 7th. And that's also another enhancement that the governor has placed um, in his order. Also, I, I just want to add with John, um, not only if you, uh, your signature, you didn't sign it, if your signature doesn't match, that's also, all those people are going to get a cure letter. Because obviously, I don't sign the way I signed sure. 20 years ago. But I, I just want to jump in a second and, be, and not to interrupt John. We have 10 people on the telephone answering phones just with questions. And I have to say the public is very in tune to certain things. And um, the biggest obvious one is, am I registered? And um, it continues. I'm happy to see that they are interested because what John just said about you put your ballot aside, people, are, we send out all kinds of letters to them to upgrade their voter registration. And believe me, it goes in the garbage. So this year, there were all a lot of people, and we spent a lot of time, some, in some cases, 15 minutes on the phone. They're elderly people. They want to like, make sure their vote counts. So uh, yeah, it's uh, quite a thing. And I just want to say that the Board of Elections is now a Bergen Community College, because our building couldn't house the, hopefully, it's 650,000 ballots that are going to come back, and maybe possibly 50,000 provisionals. Um, so they're at Bergen Community College, and you could also drop your ballot off there if you wanted to. So if I could just add, too, the one thing I know, one, some of the questions that we're receiving from our office, the superintendent's office, is people concerned that they're either getting, continue to get mail for someone that doesn't live there, or in some cases they're getting a ballot. But th that happens because the county clerk's office sends out a sample ballot prior to every single election to every single registered voter. If, that, if a person doesn't live there, if they're deceased, you're supposed to send them back. That's how our office tracks people that have moved if they don't notify us. So that's what's happening. And unfortunately, if someone's deceased outside of Bergen County, we don't get the information. We do get information from vital statistics, but if someone unfortunately passes away in, in Florida, for instance, the family should really be, really call us. We get calls, my son hasn't lived here for five years, he lives in Texas. Well, that's because you've been accepting his sample ballot. So if you really want to help us keep our roles as clear and, and clean as possible, if you receive a sample ballot for someone that does not live in your home, please just put return to sender, and then that enables our office to start to put someone on a program so that we find out, A, number one, where they actually live, or ultimately they're removed from the roles because they don't live here. And, and Peter, in this election, the governor has ordered that sample ballots don't go out because you're actually getting the ballot. And um, instead, it's a postcard. And if you think a postcard this big, well, it's going to be a big postcard because here's the prototype. On the outside, it's going to show the voter their polling place in case they want to drop off their ballot. They can only drop it off at their polling place but by the end of uh, voting on Election Day. Um, so that's one option. The other option, of course, is to mail the ballot. I started speaking about the inner envelope before. Then there's an outer envelope that has to go in, peel and seal, and um, postage paid, uh, according to the governor's order, too. And then there's the drop boxes. So the three options are listed in this card that's going to go out, and that's going to include all the drop boxes that the Board of Elections has set up. Questions? Uh, I, I, I would just like to go back to the Board of Elections. Um, <clears throat> I want the public to understand what what the procedures that they got this year are so huge for them to do. There's only really seven people that work in that office, plus the commissioners. And they, I know they've hired a lot of college kids in temps, but this is a massive project. And I 
And I want the public to understand what it takes to put this together. It's just not, oh yeah, let's just send him a ballot. There's checks, balances, letters. Then, that's not the end for us. After you vote that night, and you won't find out for a while on this one, but who won, we have to put that all back together, match up every voting authority, find out if a father signed on a, uh, um, a son's page. So it's a huge process, and we take a lot of pride, and John was right, we take a lot of pride in what we do in Bourbon County, and our record speaks for itself in the state and here, and I'm hoping to continue that record for all of us for this coming election. And look, there's people out there that, um, I'm not going to lie, call up, they're very rude, and we try to calm them down when we tell our staff, look, if they get rude with you, give them to us. As soon as you start to joke around a little bit, they're, and they're all conspiracy theories that they know what's going on. And look, I'm happy they're thinking, but by the same token, there's reality of all this. So. Um, I just want people to treat my staff with respect and us as our roles in elections. Peter, we should also let people know that because of the tremendous work that has to go into this, as Patty had just mentioned by the Board of Elections, the governor allowed us, and that's me and the Board of Elections, to not certify the election until November 20th. Mm -hmm. um, the 23rd is when we take those certified results and send them to the state because that's going to affect the presidential sure. election. It has to be in by, by that date. So, uh, you know, the days of looking up on my website and finding out the next morning who, who won, Doesn't that's not happening. Not this, this time. time. Yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, now, for the first time, I voted provisional in all these years in July just to see what it was like. Oh. And I did have my ballot, I didn't lose it. <laughs> but I just wanted to see what provisional was like. And I didn't realize you have to have a driver's license or some sort of uh, number security. to put on. So I just want the residents to know if you're voting provisional, you do have to have a driver's license number to put down mm -hmm. or some sort of identification. As with the mail-in ballot, that's my understanding, I guess. Well, you did that when you registered. Right. We so it's a little registered. easier process. Yeah. to do the mail-in as opposed to do provisional the day of the election. Well, let me just say, for the primary, we had 20,000 people who wanted to go to the polls. Yes. And they voted provisionally. And out of that, I think it was maybe 70 uh, on the voting machine, which is a, is a higher number than we usually take care of uh, for the handicapped voters in Bergen. So 20,000 people, and this is another part of the calls we're getting. You know, I stood at Target, I stood at the liquor store, blah, blah, blah. But the, the rules are the rules. 177 is in place and we have to follow it. So if you're going to go to the polling place to make a statement and vote provisionally, you're adding to so much more work for us after the election because all those provisional ballots, those 20,000, comes to our office. We do fact-finding on them to make sure you didn't vote both ways, number one. And number two, to make sure you live there, you voted in the right town, you voted in the right district all that, so you're creating more work to make a statement when for this election, please vote your mail-in ballot. That's, that's, all I can, that's all I can say to you. And hopefully by next year or by next year's primary, we're in better shape with the pandemic and the polls will be open. But, and I understand the people's frustration. You know, if New York is doing uh, polls open plus mail and you have to request it. But every state, every governor looks at things in a different light. Our governor chose to do it this way. So let's follow the rules, be big people about this. Let's follow the rules and keep down the provisional ballots. Unless, you lose your ballot and you don't have time to go to the county to get a duplicate, of course go to the polling place and use the provisional ballot. Or if you misplaced it or spill coffee on it, but that's the people that should be going to the polls, not the people that want to make a statement, I wanted to vote on a machine. Because you know what's going to happen, we're going to count the ballots and your statement's never going to be heard. Thanks. Plus they may have to wait online because we oh. combine districts. So yeah, and six feet. Six feet distancing, so it, it yep. doesn't help you and doesn't help us. No by going to the polling place because you will not be allowed to vote on the machine. No. The other thing people should realize too about provisional ballots is, as Patty said, because of the certification process that we have to do, those ballots are counted last. So everyone's concerned about getting their vote in, getting their vote counted, mm -hmm. and when can I get a result? We, the Board of Elections cannot count those ballots until we do fact-finding to make sure that you have not returned your sample ballot, your mail-in ballot. So there's a lot of checks and balances, as Patty and John said, that people are unaware of. People are saying, well, how do I know that someone's not signing my name? There's a signature comparison that takes place with the board. There's a lot of things behind the scenes mm -hmm. that protect every single voter's right to vote and the pressure 
consciousness of their vote. And we're, it's just not something that gets thrown out there and whoever returns a ballot, it's automatically counted. There are ballots that are rejected for a number of reasons. So there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and I think this is a great opportunity, Peter, for us to get the message out there. Yes, in particular about the provisional ballots because you have 70 municipalities <laughs> returning them election night. Right. right. It's after 8 o'clock, we have to bring them to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. And maybe you want to talk, I just wanted to say, just on a lighter note, you know, the people are so cynical out there and they're all in, they're all investigators now, so I just got a call just before we left the office. The gentleman said to me, uh, I saw a sheriff taking ballots out of the uh, ballot box with two people dressed very casual. There was sheriff written on the back of the car. So I said, well, I guess it was a sheriff. <laughs> but I said, I had to explain to the person, but this is what's going on. And people are being, you know, checks and balances, and they're looking all around. Um, I know on Facebook, I'm not on Facebook, but our acknowledgement card that we send out to let you know you are registered and on the rolls, one lady took a picture of it and said, this is a scam, call your police department. I mean, you know, it's just getting crazy out there. So please, if you have the opportunity to watch this, listen to what we're saying. And if you have any questions, you can call us at 201-336-6121. We are there every day till 9 o'clock uh, in the morning, and the staff is there to answer your questions. We want to try to make this as clean as possible and let the voters know truly what goes on. Peter, one final thing, too. If an active registered voter has not received their ballot by October 12th, they should reach out to our office. We can issue a duplicate because, you know, there's 600,000 ballots going out plus probably another 20 or 30,000. Mm -hmm. New voters, will, if, if they've gone up to the deadline and gotten registered to vote, they can expect their ballots probably a couple of days later. But if they haven't received it by October 12th, active registered voters, they should contact our office. My elections division is 201-336-7020, or they can email us at electionsclerk at co.bergen.nj.us. Just took off four questions on my list. <laughs> <laughs> One of the questions, uh, we get questions too, I do, and maybe we could clarify for the residents. Uh, one of the questions is, why always be on a list for future mail-in ballots by getting a mail-in ballot this year? I didn't request it, but we know in the past if you requested a mail-in ballot, you stay on the list until you send in a letter requesting a removal. So this is, year, this is, is an, exception. an exceptional yeah. year, and this year is set up by the governor's order. So we'll go, hopefully, if there's no pandemic still next year, we'll go back to the regular process. Right. This, but, and that's a good question because I'm sure John and Steve got this. They want to know, is it just for this year? Right. And it is. So, if, but what you're saying about the application, people, you know, mail will you. I think um, John does a great job in the beginning of the year of sending out a letter yeah. to see if you still want to be on it. Mm -hmm. And also at the polling place, there's opt out letters when yeah. we yes. the polling place. Yes. Correct. Uh, what if I make a mistake on the ballot? I'm doing my ballot, I make a mistake, how can I, can I correct it? Do I have to request a new one? It's up to you, <laughs> you should, If it's a major mistake, you should probably contact our office and we can reissue a ballot too. It, when the ballot comes in, there's safeguards that they have in the Board of Elections to make sure there's only one vote for each voter in Bourbon County. Right. Despite what you may hear from Washington, there's one vote. Great, thanks. And what color ink is it? There's black ink or this Black and blue ink. Black and right, blue, yes. so preferably. Pencil. Pencil. After, Pencil. The, after this election, we need black and blue. <laughs> now, I think you answered the question, but if I register by October 13th, and I'm open, Saddlebrook will be open that evening till. Thank you, I have to notify you. <laughs> <laughs> till 9 p.m. And I think John answered you'll get the ballot within a few days. Yeah, yeah. Well, registration. We'll, Patty's office sends it down to us. We then do a manual process and get it right out. And you answered the question, everyone will be receiving a notice since we consolidated districts mm -hmm. as to where the polling place yes. will be. Um, now, what happens if I just moved into town or out of town but still within Bergen County between now and Election Day? If you, if you moved within Bergen County? Right. If I moved into Saddlebrook at yeah. uh, the end of October. Well, I have to say, again, people, are, they, they're calling us. So we're, we're asking them to change their address. Then we send it down to John. And then their first ballot, if they got it, becomes uh, 
not valid, and then second ballot would be counted. And it should go either if it's first to us, go, first to, us to change it. And that also, Peter, that also applies to people that do not receive a ballot because they're on inactive status. So there are a number of people that are on what we call verification. Their mail is coming back to us. They've never responded. Now, they're not going to get a ballot automatically for this election. And they're also calling us because, again, they're checking their status on, on the state website or they're calling our office. Again, they have to change their address with us right away so that we can again translate that information down to the county clerk's office so that they can get a ballot in time for this election. Right, and also with that, on the online registration, we're directing them to that because they can change their name on there, they can change their address on there, and that's a daily, um, a daily, um, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> I didn't know what, the, I couldn't grab the word right away, but we get that every day, so it would be faster. Great, big question. Can I drop off my spouse, children's, or neighbor's ballots if I drop off mine? Okay, so here's the situation. The spirit of the law, if you if you you take your my I take mine and my husband's, I sign it on the bearer. On the back when you flip, flip his envelope over, it says bearer. And you can take them to the drop box. If you choose to bring it to the Board of Elections at the college, you're only allowed to bring three plus your own. And again, the bearer portion must be signed before it leaves the voter's hand, otherwise they'll reject it. And there's no cure for that. So, um, yeah, you can do it. I mean, and if you just sign the bearer thing and you do the right thing, I mean, but look, you go to the board. This three is the thing, three plus your own. Three it, plus to three. the Board of Elections. If you bring them to the mailbox, I mean, we don't want them stuff in the mailbox, but we're hoping that, with, again, I use the spirit of the law to do the right thing. And I'm sure people read about the Patterson case where they were stuffed in the mailbox, and that started this whole hoo-ha with the post office. But um, we're hoping that the voters of Burton County do the right thing. And one thing about the mailboxes, Peter, is that they're under 24-hour surveillance. Yep. So if anyone's trying to do anything untoward or illegal, it's going to be captured on the camera. So, And I think that's how they caught some of the people in Patterson as well. Getting back to mailing your ballot on Election Day. Now, I know the governor's order says it has to be postmarked Election Day. If I go to the post office and drop it off in a box right in front of the post office, does that necessarily mean it's going to be postmarked? Or should I go in? I wouldn't bank on it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't bank on I'm sorry to talk against our post office, but their track record is not the best. <laughs> so the person should actually go in if it's a few yep. days before and ask that it be postmarked yep. to be safe Yes. Yep. if they want to mail it. Yeah. Um, how, I think the answer is, even in a drop-off or um, a situation, can they still track the ballot that you received? It? I know it's by mail. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Every ballot. So they go on the website track. and mm -hmm. they can check and see that. Yeah. But and also, let me just say to the public: give us a couple of like with the registrations and stuff. They got to give us a couple of days because you know it's not instantaneous. Sure. Then, and people go, I, I can't find myself. Well, you just gave it to me ten minutes ago. I mean, it's not that. Does take time. <laughs> Big question. Can anybody tell how I'm voting it in a mail-in ballot? Because I'm filling no. out my name and address on a form. No. And the, I, if you could explain the procedure. Sure. When you receive. They open the ballot. In your ballot is your, uh, your certification envelope with your ballot in it. Those are separated. The ba that uh, ba uh, envelope is removed. Uh, and then the ballot is taken out and put in a pile with other ballots. The only thing that remains in your envelope is the certification and the envelope that you mailed it in. And that's the record that the board keeps. There, no one can tell how you voted. That's the secrecy of the vote. It's the same thing with the voting machines. And a gentleman said to me, oh, well, if I go in first, they're going to know. I said, they're not going to know. Because as soon as that next voter shows up, they're circling all day long in the back of the voting machine. So 500 people vote. Those five scramble it is the word I'm using. So no one could tell who voted for what. Great. Just want that reassurance. I do it. Our resolution. That's okay. That's okay. And there's no way of telling what party to register when the ballots go out or come back. Well, in a primary, sure. But in this election. Now, in this election, no. And, and the public should know that also. It doesn't matter what party you are for this election. You can give some votes to the Democrats, some votes to the Republicans. It's up to you. The only one that you have to declare a party is the primary because we're a two-party system, Democrats and Republicans. And that's why. 
Um, and a lot of people don't like to do that, and they remain unaffiliated. And they're, they're allowed to do that also. But this, this election, it doesn't matter. And last question I have is, suppose I drop it off at the municipal building by mistake. Is that ballot going to be counted or no. at it's a school? Or one of the drop boxes. It's got to be the official drop And like box. I said, or at the polling place where there is another drop box that you'll come in, sign a book with your name, address. I haven't seen it yet, but I know the state is sending it to the board. And you'll drop it there, and it goes into what we're calling a lock box. Uh, and then it comes back at the end of the night of the election with all the um, other cartridges and everything else, which I'm just going to say something at the end when you're done. <laughs> I, I covered all, all my questions I think the residents are interested yeah. in. Uh, if you have anything else to add, I certainly appreciate it. Okay. I know you have a tremendous job ahead, and I don't know really with that, but... Uh, John, I, I was saying we're tired already. It's it's only 12 o'clock. <laughs> first of all, I would just Bernie like County's to... Bernie County's the best. I know it'll, it'll happen. It'll happen. It'll happen. I, I, first of all, I just want to thank the 70 clerks of Bergen County. We've worked with them for 26 years. We've called them to arms on many occasions. We Man. keep an, an open, his first go-round machines. Um, that's an inside joke. Um, with all our communications, we keep them uh, abreast of what is going on, even in the state, in reference to us, and maybe it'll affect them. Uh, but I can tell you, when it comes to putting this election together, they are right there with us, and um, I couldn't be more proud of representing the election division of Bergen County and working with all the municipal clerks and uh, Europe. <laughs> I, 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 agree, I agree with what Patty said, and be, between the three offices, the county clerk's office, the board of elections, and our office, we all work hand in hand because we do not have any duplication of responsibilities, but we do work hand in hand. We also work hand in hand with the Division of Elections in Trenton, and we have a wonderful association on our end, the New Jersey Association of Election Officials, and those are the people in the boards and super's offices throughout the county that mirror the work that we do in Bergen County. And I know the clerk is part of COANG, and they also interact with their colleagues throughout the state. So there's a lot of information sharing going back and forth, especially in this environment where everything seems to be changing daily. But it's a team effort, and again, at the end of the day, the voters are part of this team, and we need you to vote your ballot as soon as you get it, return it so that we can have a successful election. Thank you, Peter, for having us. Um, you're a real pro at this. You could probably do any one of our jobs. But I just want the people of Saddleburg to know that this is a safe, secure election. It's a convenient way to vote. Um, the governor made the decision because of the pandemic. The days of debating it, how the election is going to be carried out, are done. All the ballots are out right now. So let's go ahead, let's cast our votes, and let's Let's make a good determination who's going to be our leaders uh, in the future. And in closing, I just want to thank John, Patty, and Terry for coming here in Saddlebrook. Uh, it's been very helpful, even for me, uh, <laughs> to know how to do a, a mail-in ballot. Uh, I think the summary that we could all give to, to the residents of Saddlebrook is as soon as you receive your ballot, you've made your decisions, please mail it in, drop it off. Uh, do not wait for election day, the final day, right. because there could be lines. We're consolidating districts into polling places. There's the six-foot distancing that will be required uh, for the voters to come in. You will have to sign uh, a book, uh, even when you're dropping off your ballot. Mm -hmm. And the provisional will take time yeah. to yes. fill out and do. The best thing to do, as John said, you do it in the comfort of your home. Review the ballot, answer questions that are on the ballot. Right. Uh, all the local, municipal, uh, board of ed, county, state, and federal uh, offices, and there are drop boxes uh, in Fairlawn, Paramus, uh, Fort Lee County. Uh, there's a whole list. John yes, it's on us. our website, uh, saddlebrooknj.us. Uh, we'll be updating yes, the website yes. from time to time, yeah. and the video will be posted both on our website and our local TV station. Thank you guys for coming. And one more thing. Okay. I, was have throw it on. I want to compliment our clerk since my picture's on it too. Uh, he sent out this flyer, very simplistic directions about the mail-in ballot. 
No, you know, Title 19, 14-70. It was just the way you do it, a couple of steps. So I want to applaud him, and thanks for a good picture. And, uh, and thank you for doing it. And this is the type of things that we do, the offices, and he's, he takes the lead on this most of the time, that informs the voters. So I hope you all go out and vote, and uh, all I can say is God bless America. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. Thank, Thank you, you. Peter. It's been a pleasure.